is not a Famicom controller or a Mini RG351P. Who are they? If you have seen our video before, you may know it's Revo K101. Oh, we should call it K101 Plus. Hi, this is Panda Mimi. Welcome back to my channel. I divided the content into 5 parts to give you a brief idea of what I gonna talk about in this video. What's in the box, first look, system, gameplay, and final words. We're going to take a look at what comes on this device stock. One charging cable. Audio and video output cable. I will try to transfer image to my little television. And a screwdriver for battery removal. Now we get a stunning fantastic FC controller game handheld. Some of you may be curious about the Indigo stuff thing. It's an RG351P Mini. No, K101 Plus continues GBA Classic color as RG351P did. It will never go out of style. And some of you guys may think it's just K101 with a different shell. How can I say it? The FC or GBA edition is full of nostalgia. They bring different feelings. We used the K101 to make an FC controller like this. Now we get K101 Plus, which is not yet on sale. But it's upcoming. The shell feels much smoother than the one we modified on a frosted panel. The Indigo version has a brown icon on the panel, the Famicom version does not. At first glance, the size of ABXY and the D-pad of two colors seem to be different. I can see FC1 is more three-dimensional and visually larger. I think it's just because of the shadow effect of the cycle around the buttons. It's some way like a girl's makeup, you know what I mean. <laughs> Short buttons of the original K101 features conductive adhesive. Now it turns to be short stroke with soft and plastic micro movement. Overall, the quality is, yes, it's really good. However, the screen is not an IPS screen. There are some gaps which are not helpful for dust prevention. It's a little bit rough. I can see the screen and the shelf frame are not parallel. By the way, it has three modes of resolution setting like 423, 322, and original GBA resolution. It can be set in the main menu on the option, then choose display. You can adjust the background brightness with this button. It has 8 or 9 modes. Also, it works as a global hotkey. It's kinda easy for you to add ROMs on the device via the microSD card. It also supports the original GBA cartridges, but I can't make sure it's fully compatible. Besides, K101 Plus supports emulations like PC Engine, Game Gear, and yes. Some people reported an issue of delaying sound and slow running speed in those games, so we will check it. We will start up GBA games first. The resolution can be set as you like, such as the original GBA aspect ratio. It can be set by hockey brightness and down.
because my Rachel television is dead, so we just skip it and try it on the high definition TV set. I'd say it's nostalgic. I miss the old days. Let's go into Game Gear. In the Bruce Lee and Burst Out of the Fire, there's some clear crackling sounds. Let's start a PC engine game. You can hear the weird and twisted sound too. The picture is wobbly. Real K101 Plus is a GBA hardware clone, so that's not strange. The device is not fully compatible with other systems. I found a really interesting thing here. I can drag the key card out when the game finishes loading. I can still play the game. It's amazing. K101 is not powerful to support kinds of emulators. It targets at nostalgic GBA. Some people think that's a way of fleece, but it allows us to reminisce about childhood. I used to dream of getting a game console when I was a child. Anyway, I will find more gameplay on this device. Tell us what's your idea on K101 Plus.